Great to see you again, to see the show continuing its growth here in Tsinghua, the home of innovation. Exactly, exactly. And uh, you've, been, uh, you've been a strong supporter uh, with BlackBerry and uh, before with uh, the USIT organization of China City. So you saw all the history of, uh, of the Korean conference. Uh, Greg, could you, I mean, we know each other pretty well, so uh, could you introduce yourself to, to, to the audience? Good afternoon, I'm Xie Guorui, I'm the representative of BlackBerry in China. <laughs> so, so maybe next questions, right? <laughs> um, so last year we had, um, at another location, uh, at the, we had uh, at, at China ICT, we had an, a talk. Um, about different things about that BlackBerry was doing at the time. So can you please highlight the key moments of BlackBerry in China since our last interview one year ago at China City 6th edition? Absolutely. It's been a very adventurous year, lots of uh, uh, opportunities, lots of new growth. I think we're about twice the size of the staff and we're more than twice the size of the business and we're getting a lot of momentum here in China. Uh, we've also expanded our uh, partnerships recently. We've um, become a full-service uh, company with all three major carriers here as our partners. Um, we have other announcements coming soon on other partnerships uh, that will help bring our product and our services to more customers. Um, most importantly, I think from last year to this year, though, um, we have grown from just starting in our application alliances to building up a uh, strong base of alliances and partners uh, in the application development space and the media services. And I think you'll see some of that at this event this year. There's uh, awards that we're handing out. Uh, uh, there's a huge uplift of interest in, in BlackBerry as a development platform. So I think that's probably the most significant development of all. Can you give us your vision of the mobile market uh, in China and uh, what the market opportunities are for, for the main players in general and, and for BlackBerry in particular? Well, it's a good question. You know, we used to talk about the mobile market and it, let's say a few years ago before 3G, before smartphone, that was a pretty specific market you're talking about. They were at least basically talk machines, right? Uh, which became maybe feature phones for very basic data applications, SMS, uh, very fundamental uh, uh, low demand, low data demand, gaming and, and uh, dating services and so forth. So the mobile market was pretty well defined and it came from a certain set of industry players. Now we really have experienced the Ronghe we've all been waiting for, right? We've been talking about it for 20 years, but it actually really has happened and BlackBerry is one of the leading companies to make that true convergence with computing, internet, and data happen, right? Uh, so we're really, when you talk about the mobile market, it's hard to define it now. Where does it stop? Is it mobile computing? Is it media? Is it advertising? Is it commerce? It's shape-shifting and metastasizing in English. That means like spreading almost like a cancer. It's really moving into everything. I know that's a bad image, but uh, it really is. But, but, that's that's actually a very expressive image. Yeah. Uh, but it is really moving in. And I think some of the other established distinctive barriers between subsectors are no longer that distinguished. The final point I'd say is of all those pods of television, computing, mobility, communications in general, internet, uh, data and related services, within all of those, probably mobility has the jazz, has the juice. The reason is because it is mobile and it is so effectively attached to the person and their self-identity, their lifestyle, their work style. So it's most tangible and it's most concrete uh, expression of this convergence. Even though it involves all of these players, it is sublimated in a way, most concretely, in the hand in the mobile industry. So the, the brands that are dominating in pro providing these uh, devices, these applications, and these interfaces are the ones that are seeing the greatest uh, brand value, the successful brands, even though it's touching on a huge ocean of different types of companies contributing to it. 
So I think that's the first mega trend: true convergence and mobility being at the uh, at the cap of an ecosystem. The second major convergence is the emergence of China as not just the largest industry by every measure, but the most important industry. And what do I mean by most important? China is moving from a follower in innovation to a partner in innovation. And with time will become in certain aspects clearly a leader in innovation. Not just in the technology and the product, but in the business models, in the applications, in the styles of usage, whether it's personal or business or public service. This is another major uh, mega trend. Okay, so from 10 years ago when there really was no mobility in China to a situation today where China is the most important commercially to a situation 10 years from now when it will probably be the one setting most of the trends. So it's very exciting to be representing a company that's playing an important role in those two mega trends: true mobile computing and the, you know, the really the emergence of China as a major source of energy in the industry. So BlackBerry is very privileged, and we're taking various concrete steps at building all the pieces so that we have a very strong Chinese accent in our company. I, I truly appreciate your insights because um, I think the audience should know for those uh, who, who are not very familiar uh, with, with your, your bio that you, you've been starting interacting and doing business in China some 20 years ago, something like that? Uh, okay. So I've been here a while. Um, most of that time was in uh, well, let's say technology, science and technology, mm -hmm. really got much more involved in computing and then mobility and computing about 15 years ago. Okay. Yeah. So, um, this afternoon we're going to see plenty of uh, mobile application, plenty of mobile developers and so on. Um, we've been working pretty closely uh, together on, on the agenda uh, because I wanted your insight as a, as a mobile expert and also uh, as, a, as a chain expert because you've been here for so long. So can you describe really a bit what, what's ahead for this afternoon that we're going to see and why does it matter for uh, our primary uh, audience uh, this afternoon, which are the, the, the developers? Well, I think we were talking about this idea which eventually emerged as the... Uh the planet. The China planet. Ch China planet. China, China planet forum, yes. Platform. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think I, I congratulate you on taking the leadership to bring that in. I think it's just perfect timing. Uh, because in these two trends of, uh, that I was talking about is the true convergent mobility or convergence of mobile computing and the Chinese uh, renaissance. Um, the, the lead actors are more and more those that are building experiences that are uh, critical to people's lives. Those are actual applications and games and uh, work tools and media services. Those are the things that really are at the heart of it. Uh, we've moved well beyond the application of voice. And we know the application of voice with Skype and other such services is virtually commoditized. Uh, the real difference, the real edge, the real spice in the industry, of course, is, is this experience which is um, intuitive and really solves problems and gets things done. Um, so, and again, that's where we in, in BlackBerry feel that we can make a special contribution because the optimal experience has to be reliable, work everywhere, be secure, be com you know, highly efficient on the network. And all of that points to the technology that you don't see in your hand with a BlackBerry. It all points to the infrastructure and the complete, the software and the hardware that is in behind uh, in the BlackBerry ecosystem, okay? And so we're now building that also in China. We're building every piece of it up. And we see uh, a great situation where um, with our new QNX uh, platform on the playbook, you have an ability to develop on an open system even more open than the previous BlackBerry system. And you can develop run times on just about any platform. On, on, we're announcing Android support, um, HTML5, C++, uh, Java. Just about anything you, you care to think of can be developed and run on the playbook. 
And these will also be coming to our uh, high-end mobile phones as well in the near future. So we're really moving into a situation where uh, we'll be a sandbox for innovation for developers from just about any background to be able to express themselves. So this afternoon, we will be having uh, some awards recognizing those who've been developing applications on the BlackBerry platform, both in the enterprise and in the consumer. And we look uh, forward to recognizing their great achievements. I'm glad you were mentioning the, the, the playbook because actually I was, I was wondering, uh, is the playbook used by BlackBerry as an entry point to convince non-BlackBerry users to start using BlackBerry products? A little bit like, uh, like Steve Jobs did with, with, uh, with the Apple iPhone actually. Well, it's, a, it's an interesting question. The BlackBerry itself, 12 years ago, 1999, was an entry point to convince traditional PC and maybe mostly PC users uh, to have data in their hand that's reliable and secure wherever they go. We didn't even have voice on the BlackBerry until two years later. And it really put underneath it a system that allowed for reliable, secure, compressed, efficient communications, better than other vendors had had. So mobile data began. It began primarily in the enterprise, where they have requirements for secure mobile data and international connection. Well, surely everything else built on top of that. The voice came, the, the rest of the applications came, we see the BlackBerry develop. Now, that was sort of like mobile data 1.0. We're now entering mobile data 2.0. Um, much greater demands with video chat and uh, rich media experiences. Uh, so the need for the network is more than ever. The need for security is more than ever. The operating system that we had, uh, which is strong for the first generation, um, is struggling with certain aspects of what is required in the future. So for our leading edge devices, we're bringing in this established operating system from another company and we're building a new set of products there, that's the QNX. This, in a sense, will enable another generation of displacement of behaviors or movement of behaviors from traditional devices to the new. So just as the PC started to be not entirely, you could do things with the original BlackBerry uh, and then the BlackBerry smartphone, which came later, uh, and the need for a lot of expenditure uh, with a lot of wires and big boxes went away, um, so this will lead to even more of that. The laptop will be, in many cases, not necessary. The netbook will be displaced. Now we hear this with the other media pads, but the difference is with the BlackBerry Playbook, it is a mobile computing device, highly powerful for multitasking with separate run times. So you can run on the, uh, the POSIX-based, Linux-based open kernel, you can run run times of just about anything. This is getting developers extremely excited in other parts of the world and also in China. And on that media pad, you can have that efficiency, that security, that reliability. You can tether it to your BlackBerry and do all of your BlackBerry work uh, that you normally do, um, plus have a lot of fun because it's also a great multimedia device and it multitasks very well. So we see it as in a similar, it's sort of like a new generation of displacement. It's another a repeat of what is fundamental BlackBerry. And fun BlackBerry isn't fundamentally any one device. It's a combination of device and software connecting to a global infrastructure. So this is like another cut at it and showing the strength of that secure, scalable, highly efficient infrastructure globally for mobile cloud computing. And that's where we're going to see another sort of correction, reset, ramp up with BlackBerry. The main difference for developers is this. The first generation was based on a Java, which was fairly tricky, okay? It opened up more over time. Last year, two years ago, we had a lot more uh, APIs open, more toolkits, but still took a bit of effort to figure out how to really develop on BlackBerry. Um, this is very different. This is based on a Linux-based, POSIX-certified open kernel environment. Total integration, you, Adobe, you name it, you run it. Um, any system theoretically can be run on it. So this is a, a, a very different horizon for us, especially in China. 
Okay, uh, one uh, last question regarding uh, the, the playbook. Pretty candid questions, actually. Um, I personally, I'm not using any tablet computer uh, so far. I would like to, to use one. I don't know which one to buy, to be perfectly frank. Um, perfectly who? <laughs> <laughs> I am frank, that's true. Um, the, um, <clears throat> the, so is it, uh, why should I buy a BlackBerry versus the traditional iPad uh, 2 or other, other competitive? Well, it's a good device. question. I, I go back to the early history of the BlackBerry device, which then became a smartphone. Um, I always remember when I first heard BlackBerry, I'd be in a theater back in the US or Canada, and they'd say, ladies and gentlemen, please turn off your mobile phones and your Blackberries. Right? And why was that? Why didn't they just say mobile phones? Because a BlackBerry is a fundamentally different thing. It is a portal into a global ecosystem. When people understand that, when developers understand that, they will see the difference. Same with your playbooks. They'll be saying, ladies and gentlemen, turn off your media pads and your playbooks. You see? Because it is, it is a window into a secure global infrastructure. Now, when you're developing applications like that, high, obviously enterprise, it's really cool. But you know what? Consumers normally like to have those enterprise-grade advantages too. So much so that in the first two or three years of selling BlackBerry smartphone into enterprises, we were overwhelmed by consumer demand. We were dragged into the consumer business. It wasn't our original plan. That's where BBM came from. BBM, you mean young BBM, BlackBerry Messenger, right? Once you start on that, you're getting the BlackBerry infrastructure. That's what you're getting. And then you'll get all kinds of other BBM 6, 7, 8 into the future, all kinds of social, effective, very powerful communication wherever you are. That's what's going to happen on the playbook. And that's the reason why you want to try buying one, because it's, it's not just a media pad. It's a BlackBerry mobile computing platform. Right? Plus, it's, oh, a couple other quick things. It rocks. <laughs> okay? It's got dual core. It's got HDMI. It's got incredible screen. Um, well, I just love it, really. I, I love that playbook, and I can't get enough of it. So I hope you can enjoy it yourself. Okay. Um, I saw. I saw. The, yeah. It, it, I saw the amazing quality of the pictures uh, last Friday. Uh, so it's, it was. A, it, it's pretty, pretty impressive. Um, to finish this interview, uh, uh, because I know that you you got to take a plane sometime soon, and I think your your huge staff uh, coming with you is going to kill me if I don't let you go sometime soon. So. Um, I have two, two questions which are much more uh, linked to, to the type of audience we are welcoming uh, at Chennai City, meaning uh, many entrepreneurs. <clears throat> so, th this afternoon we have uh, many developers who are also, uh, for many of them, entrepreneurs. Um, since you've been here already for quite some time, would you recommend for mobile entrepreneurs or mobile developers from the West in particular to come to China to create their new venture? I would recommend them to partner with these kind of folks here to create their venture. Because they may have what they think is the world's greatest product or service, um, and they may find that already it exists here, or there's a better version here, so first of all they should check the market, or it is truly an innovation, which is a breakthrough, uh, which will be anything that's cool is just desired in China, because China wants the very best. right? Um, Western audiences that are listening should not be thinking of China in a dated view with lots of gentlemen on green jackets with a bicycle, ding, 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 you know, something from, you know, 30 years ago. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that often is a bit of an image that still lingers in folks' minds if they've never been to China. Think of it as, uh, we, when I grew up, the big city was New York. And they had an express. I'm that old, right? <laughs> New York, New York, what a heck of a town, right? There's all kinds of songs about New York. But one of the great things they would say is, uh, New York, New York, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere, right? And so like, if you, if you can compete in New York, you can do anything. Today's New York is Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen, that's it. So you should be aware that you're coming to the top of the mountain, really. And you should find people who are from here to help you climb that mountain. They should be true business partners and innovation partners. If you have that right thinking and you have something cool to do and you're flexible and you love 
different experiences and different cultures, you'll do just fine. Reminds me of a French friend of mine, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember the first time I met you, it was just like that. Very successful in the West. It was very curious here, had the open mind and all that, and see the result. So okay. I say, just follow your example and you'll be fine if you're another Western entrepreneur. So, so basically, if you can make it in China, you can make it uh, anywhere, right? Absolutely. Okay, that's great. So um, let's say that uh, I'm, um, this has been a lingering question of mine during this, this conference and, uh, and it will be also tomorrow. If I'm an entrepreneur here in China developing a, a new software, a new application and so on, what should I develop in order to get acquired by BlackBerry sometime soon? <laughs> Well, I think, of course, it, you're probably developing to be, if you're developing to be acquired and not to become the next uh, mega company, um, you're looking to work with a number of different uh, players, right? So uh, a developer has limited time and they want to know that they're developing for easy deployment on a number of platforms. Limited time, limited money, limited uh, engineering spend. So they have to be very focused in what they do. So what I'd suggest you do in terms of BlackBerry again is look at the distinctive advantages, look at the customer base and the growth vector, and look at some of the examples of applications that are, we're going to be recognizing this year. Um, a lot of them are focused on either enterprise or people who have good jobs and have a lifestyle outside of work. So there's a crossover, right? Folks who want to have efficiency in... Uh, trading of stocks or booking of travel or selecting fine wines at a restaurant and a dinner. That is sort of your higher end consumer. Um, and when you acquire those customers, you can have a smaller base, but a much higher revenue. So if you're interested in that kind of market, which then becomes prestige and can lend your business a certain degree of valuation because you have those kind of customers, they're interesting to advertisers to work with you. This could be a good company, BlackBerry is a good company to work with. If you're on the other hand looking to do a basic tool or game for massive wide deployment, then there are other uh, vendors out there that might make more sense. All right. Thank you so much, Greg. Always a pleasure.